Ah, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Matthew Maley, from MatthewMaley.com. As you can tell, we are back on the couch. It is time for another weekly movie review. This week, I uh, was able to catch a movie a little bit early before it came out on DVD. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's no longer in the theaters, but uh, it has not come out on DVD yet. I believe it's coming out within the next, I think, two or three weeks. But I wanted to knock this review out because I did like the movie. So um, I, I actually watched a couple movies this week and picked the one that I liked the most to do the review of so we can get more positive re reviews out here. I um, apologize if it's a little bit late. Um, I've been up for a lot of hours and uh, it's officially my birthday. It uh, started off as a Friday night and now it's a Saturday morning and it is officially my birthday. So I'm up doing a weekly movie review for you guys on my birthday. But uh, the movie I'm speaking of is a rather dark and very independent feeling movie called Drive. Starring Ryan Gosling, Carey Mulligan, Albert Brooks, Ron Perlman, who's awesome in this movie, and my dude, Brian Cranston. And it's nice to see him in something other than Malcolm in the Middle, especially because of how much I love Breaking Bad. So this is very similar to Breaking to his character in Breaking Bad. Um, they're, they're very, just how they act, um, even how they look is very similar. So I really like that. I'm a big Brian Cranston fan. If you guys don't watch Breaking Bad, please do. I know I said that in the Red State review, but please, please, please do. It is an amazing, amazing, like a five syllable version of amazing show. So anyway, um, the, the movie is, I'll just give you a basic synopsis then we'll kind of go into the, what I liked and what I didn't like about it. But the movie is a character study, interpersonal study, um, if you will, following a stunt driver, Ryan Gosling, who moonlights um, f as a wheelman. And he's a great wheelman um, for robberies, things of that nature. He's great. He's probably one of the best in the business. He follows his own code that involves not carrying a gun. He is very specific about his timing to a T. He's very specific about what he requires from the people employing him. Um, and really, he's got it down to a pretty good science. He also works in a car shop, so he has the ability to work on and customize cars for his needs. Um, we see pretty early on in the movie that he's pretty beastly when it comes when it comes to evading the police. So you know he's he's a, he's a bad dude. And Ryan Gosling just has that vibe about him. I don't know what it is about Ryan Gosling. But he's kind of got he's kind of got the same vibe as like Ryan Reynolds or even Edward Norton to an extent, where it's just kind of like, yeah, I'm bad, and what you know, and Gosling definitely he he has that. So, and I, I still would like to put a quick aside that I still do not like Ryan Gosling, but we'll get more into that later. So <laughs> he uh, ends up um, through some random events meets his new neighbor, who is played by Carrie Mulligan, or Mulligan, or however you pronounce it, I apologize. Um, about this time, he is attempting, um, the character uh, of Brian Cranston is attempting to put together a race team. Because of how good of a driver Ryan Gosling is, he wants to put together a race team. But, even though he's had some run-ins with the law, I mean, sorry, with the mob before, he still cannot make the money or put together the funds to start this race team without loaning or without getting a loan, I'm sorry, through another rather shady, unscrupulous, possibly connected mob fellow. That being um, Mr. Brooks, uh, I apologize, mine lost for a second there, who is partnered with Ron Perlman's character. So you pretty much know from the jump something bad's going to happen. And uh Oh, it does not disappoint. <laughs> so, while you have this story of him trying to get this race company off the ground, he, uh, Ryan Gosling meets his new neighbor, Carrie Mohan, sorry, um, who has a son, but whose father is away in prison. And they end up starting somewhat of a romance until he comes back from prison. 
and then pretty much all hell breaks loose. I don't want to give too much away because it was a well done movie and there definitely were some turns, some double crosses, some betrayals, some damn I didn't see that coming. So I don't want to give too much away. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I will say it was well done. I definitely think you should check it out. But I want to make sure you aren't expecting something that's not there. Because I know I kind of was. When I went in this movie, I was expecting a very fast-paced action, constant car chases, constant shoot 'em up racing through the streets of L.A., whatever, whatever. But it's not that. Yeah, there are a couple instances of that. But so much more of the movie is actually just watching the development of feelings between Ryan Gosling's character and Carrie Mulligan, Mulholland, whatever, Mulligan, apologize, as well as her son. And then to a, to a later, to a lesser extent, once her husband comes back from prison, Ryan Gosling and him becoming whatever. So it definitely, don't go into it expecting it to be a typical, you know, Hollywood chase movie, because it's not. It's definitely more of an independent film. The entire vibe through the whole movie is a much more independent film. Um, while that said, there definitely are a few really awesome car chases, as well as some pretty graphic violence. Um, I really wasn't expecting to see the violence that was in it, which I mean, I have no problem with. I just wasn't expecting it from when you, what you see about for the first half of the movie is pretty relaxed, not that violent. And then when it jumps in, it jumps in with both feet into the deep end. It doesn't ease in. And we've got stabbings that are just bloody everywhere. We've got wrists being slit. We've got shot or heads being blown off by shotguns. It gets pretty intense. Um, need, like I said, I don't want to give much about the plot, but a lot of double crossing happens. And damn, Ryan Gosling's a beast. Still kind of like the guy, but he's a beast. One thing that I thought was interesting about how it was filmed, and I've had a couple conversations with some friends who've seen the movie and my cousin, to try and establish what they feel was the reasoning behind um, some of the ways, some of the shots that were filmed. A lot of the dialogue in the movie doesn't happen, if that makes sense. A lot of the dialogue is actually done without words at all, just based on how Gosling is positioned in a doorway and what he says with his eyes or what he says with his with his reaction or whatever. There are a few scenes in the very beginning when Ryan Gosling gives them a ride back because their car is having troubles where he's standing in her apartment and they don't really say anything. And I know that it's partly to try to show this establishment of feelings and, you know, whatever, but I was surprised with, with some of the ways that they filmed some of the stuff. It almost, it was funny, something that my cousin and I were talking about. It almost seems as though they filmed him, his character having Asperger's, the Asperger's syndrome, and just some of the ways that he interacts is very reminiscent of Asperger's syndrome. Another thing that I thought was interesting is they never really touch on where Ryan Gosling's character got not only all these driving skills, but also his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, his gun skills, his knife skills. They never really go into that, which I guess in a way that adds to the mystique, if you will, of the movie. It adds to that element of, so who really was he? And at the end of the day, it wasn't that that necessary. Um, it would have been cool to have a little bit more background detail, but it wasn't it wasn't incredibly pertinent to the story if you were willing to just kind of overlook something just a little bit. So, overall I did like it. Overall I thought it was a good movie. I ended up giving this four stars out of five. Um, I probably am going to buy it eventually. I'm not going to go and spend 30 bucks on the Blu-ray right now, but at some point whenever it comes out I probably will check it out um, and end up adding it to my collection. The one reason more than anything why I loved it was the soundtrack. And it's been a while since I found a, a movie, you know, short of something like How High or the EDC Experience, you know, which obviously have great soundtracks. But where I found a movie that had a soundtrack that captivated me to the point where there was points in the movie where I rewatched the scene just to hear a song. And that hasn't happened 
for me at least, since I watched Requiem for a Dream for the first time, which still, in my opinion, has to be the best, best soundtrack of all time. Um, also, it's a lot of that same type of, oh, wait, what song was that? Look it up online. In both of the Kill Bill movies, Quentin Tarantino's known for killing it with soundtracks. Got the RZA to come in and do a lot of stuff on it, as well as some other crazy people. Uh, not really crazy people, but some crazy bands that I liked. I'm um, in groups. So that was another one that really got me like, wait, what? So this was one of those movies where literally I rewound to listen to a song. So it does show how much a good soundtrack can do to really boost a movie. I liked the movie as it was. I thought it was cool. I liked the Scorpion Jackety Rocks. I liked how they ended it. I liked how they did most things in it. Though I was a little sketchy on why they did some of the ways that they filmed some of the dialogue. But I still really liked it. And then... I went over and really thought about the soundtrack as a whole and I was like, yeah, solid four-star movie. No question. Boom, boom, boom. So definitely was feeling was feeling the uh, soundtrack. I actually went on to iTunes and downloaded it. I was feeling it so much. So um, I know it won't be for everybody. My cousin didn't really like it because it has much more of like a indie, hipster, soft rock type of vibe to it, um, which I think is cool. In moderation in certain groups I don't love all of the softer hipster style rock if you will I really don't even know what the proper name for it is and I apologize if I'm offending somebody but um I did like it I thought it was very well done I thought that the music matched the movie perfectly um, again right up there not quite to the level of Kill Bill um, or a Requiem for a Dream, but in my opinion, on the same level as Garden State, which also had a great soundtrack, in my opinion, and also was very indie, soft rock type of feel to it, or had an indie, soft rock type of feel to it. So, overall, I definitely would say check it out um, when it comes out, but be prepared for a character study um, and a study on interpersonal relationships with some action and car chases sprinkled in there, but be prepared for what it is, and uh, you'll like it a lot more. So hopefully you like my review. Um, like I said, the movie will be coming out soon, so make sure you go check it out. Ended up, movie re reviewed today is Drive, starring Ryan Gosling. Gave it four stars out of five, so I probably will add it to the collection, but I definitely recommend you seeing it, and hopefully you like it. So let me know what you think of my review. Did you love my review? Did you hate my review? Did you love the movie? Did you hate the movie? Either way, I'm always curious to find out. Let me know also if there's anything you think I could do that would make this reviewing process better. If there's anything specific you want me to review or whatever, that's what I'm here for. So, as always, thank you for checking out all my videos. Much appreciated. If you're up on MatthewMailey.com right now, you got the entire rest of the video blog to check out. So I'd appreciate it if you did. Then maybe hop over to the discussion comments tab, drop your boy a message. If you're up on YouTube right now, again, watch the rest of the videos if you don't mind. Maybe watch them a few times. As always, you can like my video if you liked it. You can leave me a comment if you got something to say. And of course, subscribe to my channel. Always got videos popping up at least a few times a week, so stay up on it. Of course, you can follow your boy up on Twitter. Those are for all my 150 word messages and less. Follow me at Matthew Maley. And as always, like my page up on Facebook for all my longer than 150 word pages or posts. I'm sorry. Search for my, uh, my page at Matthew Maley Poker and then like the page. You'll be right there with all the, the newest info. So until the next video, it is officially Christmas Eve. I'll be doing another video for Christmas. I wish everybody a happy, healthy, and safe holiday season, as well as New Year. But stay tuned. All kinds of videos popping off this next week. So uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, and uh, until the next video, I'm out. Peace, y'all.